Hello and welcome back to the Processing Kitchen for a nice little afternoon project where we're going to be turning some of our garden fruit into something fizzy and boozy. So we're going to be making a watermelon fizz and a regular melon fizz. I don't actually know what the variety is. It could be a kind of cantaloupe. It could be something called gallia. Uh, the plants were actually a gift, so I don't know exactly what the variety is. We've got two types of melon. We're going to make two types of drinks. I found this recipe in a cool book that I bought myself recently and it sounded really tasty so we're going to give it a try. Let's see what happens. Got me some melons. Very nice. Four melons in fact. No, five. Well, four of these and one massive melon that is so heavy our scales Broke. won't weigh it. So we're going to have to cut it in half to see what it actually weighs. People were very disappointed that we didn't cut into it in a previous yeah, video. And I apologize for that. I didn't even think about that when we did the watermelon cordial. Um, so we're going to cut into it today so you can have a look. And whatever's left over from this experiment, I will use the rest of it to make some cordial because we like the watermelon cordial. Yeah, a it was lot. delicious. And hopefully this will be too. It should be. Yes. So tell me, what do we have to do? Yeah, we'll need some buckets. Alright, nice. let's put that there. I wonder what we could use this for. So whilst Kylie's chopping up fruit, I'll tell you a little bit about the recipe and the book that it came from. I bought this on, I think I bought it on Amazon. It is called Booze by John Wright. It is part of the River Cottage Handbook series. River Cottage is a restaurant in the UK that does some really, really cool stuff. And there's a huge range of really interesting recipes in this book. They do spirit infusions, wines, mostly fruit wines, cider and beer. So I've been doing lots of research about all sorts of boozy things that we can make from the things that we grow here on the farm in Portugal. And this recipe is really simple. It is basically a melon, a bit of lemon juice, a bit of lemon zest, some sugar and a pinch of yeast. And we let it ferment for about a week. And then to make it fizzy, we'll strain all of the liquid off at that point into some plastic bottles, something like, something like this, so it can't explode because we're gonna do a secondary fermentation in the bottle. So all the gas that's released during the fermentation process will get trapped in here and it will get kind of fizzy and it should be a nice fun way to enjoy a little bit of melon from the garden. Something to add? Yeah, so just to mention for all those lovely people who leave comments asking why we don't just eat the fruit, don't worry. We do. Oh, and it's been <laughs> delicious. Our garden has, so this is four melons. We've probably eaten three or four already, and there's still another 10 or 12 or so in the garden still. Uh, and we've given some away because we actually donated the melon plant for us on So we return the favor by giving them grown melon. Um, so, and it's the same with the watermelon. We eat a lot of it, but and we make cordial with a lot of it. Yeah, but we want to preserve it through the seasons. So it's only good fresh now, whereas we actually want to be enjoying it through the autumn and the winter. Um, and that's our whole plan with everything we grow, is to eat a lot of it fresh, but to preserve it so that we can enjoy it all year round. So you may see in the background here, Guy this morning made tomato sauce. Tomato ketchup. Tomato ketchup, sorry. Yesterday I made a courgette and tomato curry paste sauce. Uh, I also did aubergine and tomato chutney. Uh, many relishes and pickles. <laughs> mm, yeah. Thankfully we are now out of cucumbers. <laughs> um, but yeah, so we do eat it all fresh as well as feeding some of it to the chickens. Um, There's a load in the freezer. Yeah, and we do all the things <laughs> to make it last as long as possible. So maybe you can do the blending while we finish the cutting. Yeah, let's do that. So we have our clean and sanitized bucket. This is our fermentation vessel. It's just a bucket, um, but it's food grade, which is important. So let's stick some of this in here. And scrape all those seeds in as well. Yeah. I mean, I don't know what the seeds are adding, but we'll do it because that's what the recipe says. So the recipe is a little vague in terms of quantities. It calls for one honeydew melon. We don't have honeydew melon, but we have these cantaloupe, gallia, whatever you call them, melons. 
but my estimate is that one honeydew is about two kilos. And so we've got four kilos of melon that we have juiced into a pulp. The recipe calls for one lemon zest and juice, so we're gonna do two lemons. We're basically doing a double batch. And we'll do exactly the same thing with the watermelon. I think we need a new grater, this is rubbish. <laughs> It doesn't look very appetizing. Well, it just looks like melon smoothie. Nothing wrong with that. A nice sanitized spoon. Oops. So there we go. It doesn't look that appetizing at the moment. Normally at this stage of the wine making process, this isn't really wine at all, but um, normally I'd use something like this. This is a tool called a hydrometer that allows me to know how much sugar is in the thing that we're about to ferment to give an idea of how much alcohol by volume is going to have at the end. But this is like a melon soup, like a really thick smoothie. So this tool isn't going to work. What's supposed to happen with this thing is you get a test tube, you fill it with your liquid, which is normally much more liquidy, like water or wine or fruit juice or something. And then you drop, you drop this into it and it floats up and down based on the amount of sugar or based on the density of the liquid. And then you can kind of turn it around and it gives you a, a reading of how much potential alcohol by volume you could get when the whole thing is finished fermenting. That's not going to work in this case, so we're not going to do it. But we've followed the recipe, so hopefully we get enough sweetness, enough alcohol, and it all works as planned. You know why it broke the scales? It's like heavy. It's heavy, yes, you're right. <laughs> Alright. Are you are you happy with that massive knife? <laughs> That's huge, isn't it? I have to go off my tippy toes. I wouldn't, okay. I'm well, gonna try and cut it in half. Yeah, then we might be able to weigh it. Exactly, and we can put it's not exactly half because we can't cut straight. It's not half, but it's a piece. It's slightly large. Okay. Ooh, ooh, ooh. That nice is actually colour. really light pink compared to what I'm used to for watermelons. Well, maybe it's because it's organic. <laughs> maybe. Right. See, see, I think it should have grown bigger than this. But. Yeah, the voles had other ideas. That is 3.3 .3 kilos. And that is 5.3. So 8.6 in total. The recipe does it call for, because we're going to cut off a lot of this, right? Yeah. Does it call for the flesh to weigh a certain amount? No, there's no weight, which is very confusing. It's just like one melon, <laughs> but I think of a fairly traditional size. So okay. if we use half this half, all of this, all of that one, <clears throat> okay. I think that will give us the about the same amount as the first one. Okay, it's a big knife. Yeah, I've really used this knife because it's so big. I mean, it's perfect for all of cutting. This is not the right t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> wearing on a food prep day, but you know. Okay. I'll be interested to see if the first one actually works. Yeah. But that's why we experiment. That's exactly right. I mean, it'll still be alcohol <clears throat> of some description. This, this watermelon one would be really nice with pink tonic. Now we're getting fancy. So we're almost done. We've got our melon smoothie with some added sugar. We've brought this one up to 1080 on the hydrometer so that so this is as per the recipe. This one, we couldn't get a good reading on, so we've just used the quantities in the recipe. The last thing to do is to add some yeast so that we actually get some fermentation going. And we've got some Young's white wine yeast. Uh, it's an all-purpose white. It's a five gram packet. The recipe calls just for a sprinkle, so I'm just gonna sprinkle a little bit on the top here. 
of this one and on this one. So we'll give that a stir in, get a bit of oxygen going, which is good at this stage. I'll be interested to see how this one works or if it works. <laughs> But maybe it will kind of split and separate out. Mm. But you know, regardless, we'll see. Hi. <laughs> so in theory, we melon fizz the really sounds like a good idea. In practice, mm. it's it's not looking so good. I think what we've made is a fermented melon smoothie. <laughs> But just stick your nose in there, which I have done recently. Oh. Yeah, right? What is that? Oh. <coughs> yeah, it's weird and strong. It's been four days. When did we do this? It's been six days Ooh. since we started this process. The fermentation was very fast. It's about 24 degrees inside for mostly during the day and the night and um, the yeast that we put in really got to work on all the melon sugar and the added sugar that we put in and it was bubbling furiously. We stirred it a few times and um, it's definitely created alcohol. It smells very strong indeed. Mm, I think we'll be adding water to that. And, and I have already added a litre of water just because it was so solid that I couldn't see any way of like separating out the pulp from the, the dead yeast. And um, yeah, it smells very strong indeed. I'm starting without you. So what we're gonna try and do is pass it through a, through a muslin cloth to try and filter out some of the pulp so that we just get liquid. Then we'll put it into a plastic bottle for a secondary fermentation to get it all fizzy. That's why it's called melon fizz. And we'll see if it works. Oh, look at that, yeah, that is coming out quite nicely. Maybe all's not lost. So after straining, we transferred the melon wine back into the fermenting buckets to let any remaining particles settle out. Then the next day, we took a hydrometer reading and we found that the wines had already fermented completely dry. This basically means that all the sugar had already been used up, eaten by the yeast, and converted into alcohol. What this meant was there wasn't any remaining sugar to create the fizz in the bottle. So we added five grams of sugar to each one litre bottle and racked the melon wine on top. And then we put it aside for a further two days for the secondary fermentation. And now it's time for the taste test. Right, it's time for a taste test and to see how our melon fizz fizzed. Um, it's not looking too promising across the board, <laughs> but there's definitely one that has done its thing. Uh, I'll show you this one first. So this is our cantaloupe or regular melon. This looks almost identical to how it did when we left it a couple of days ago. There is uh, no, no bubbles have been formed, so I do not have high hopes for this but I do have a theory on why this might have happened. This is the first of our watermelons. There is just a little bit of air at the top, or carbon dioxide actually. So we should have a slight fizz on this one. However, this one is looking pretty good though. There should be a nice bit of fizz in here. And I think this is the one that we will end with for a uh, grand finale. Breakfast you, wine. And some breakfast wine, because it's very early. We always seem to taste these wines early in the morning, but we've got to get a video out to you. So that's what we're going to do. So we did, when we were racking this into the bottle, I did a tiny bit of a taste test of this and it's vinegar. So I have no hopes for this that is going to be anything nice. Can you even get the lid off? Yeah. Oh. I mean, maybe there's a tiny bit of, but I don't think, I think that's just the bottle. <sighs> so, I've just brushed my teeth, which is not the right thing to have done, but maybe it'll make it taste better. Yeah, you can just smell it on the nose, it's got vinegar. Could make a nice salad dressing. <laughs> ah, ah. 
Hundred percent vinegar. <laughs> so I think yes, it would make a very nice salad dressing. Actually, it's very tart. It's got that mullen flavour. But oh my, yeah, that's a vinegar. Taste it yourself. You did a good job there. I didn't even have to ask you to use your descriptive words. Look at that face. <laughs> I do not have high hopes for this. Oof, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it make a good marinade, I think. Yeah, you could marinate some some fish or some chicken in this. Yeah. Pickled vegetables, like with Ooh. a with a dressing Actually, over the top, yeah. that'd be quite nice. It's very fresh and tangy. Mm. Um. Mm. As a wine, that's disgusting. <laughs> but as a vinegar, it's actually really nice. It will be a very nice vinegar for sure. Salad mm. dressings, etc. If you're expecting to drink it like a fizzy wine, you'd be very disappointed. <laughs> but if you're expecting it to be like a nice apple cider vinegar or a wine vinegar or some kind of fruit vinegar, it's actually very nice. Yeah. Ooh. Let's come in for a close up. Oh, that was disappointing. That was very <laughs> disappointing. Let's see if we get any fizz at all. No. no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, this is why we experiment, though, to to see and to learn. We have some theories on what has happened. Yes, and I'll share those in a second. Good okay, face. so it's definitely not as bad as that. Um, it is like a watermelon wine. It has that dry wine kind of finish. It's got a little bit of tang. But not not a vinegar tang, just oh, it does taste the watermelon. It does not smell very nice. I don't know what that kind of smells like. This is going to sound wrong, but baby's sick. I'm using my words. You're using very descriptive words today. I'm impressed. Um, it doesn't taste too bad. There is no fizz in there whatsoever. Mm, disappointing. Well, it's got a nice natural cloudiness to it. Hmm, yeah, it's, it's got quite a nice, pleasant, melony smell. But also a bit of baby sick. No, it's that kind of sourness that you often get from, from homebrew, particularly stuff that mm. has not <laughs> not aged or been <laughs> or been made properly. We will we will share very shortly all the things that we <laughs> have learned. Have learned and would do differently next time. Because I think we made a lot of mistakes with this one. Mmm. That's actually not bad. It's it's wine, right? It's it's not a fizz. If we put it in the soda stream. Yeah, I was going to suggest that maybe we uh, fake the carbonation with the soda stream because that would, I think it'd be nice. See some tiny. There's bottles? a tiny little bit. But yeah, um, for this kind of bottle conditioning, a couple of days is not enough. It mm. should be a couple of weeks at least. Um, so that was one mistake. <laughs> the the biggest mistake I think was there were many mistakes actually. <laughs> so the first thing is the the bucket that we used was too big. So there was too much oxygen in there, and that combined with like the two step process of pressing the like removing the pulp from the liquid and then putting it aside for another day or two and then putting it in, into bottles meant there was a lot more oxidation than there should have been. So that's basically why we've got vinegar. Vinegar is made from oxygen added to alcohol. Um, the other big mistake was putting in too much yeast. So the recipe said like a sprinkle or a pinch of yeast and I put in <laughs> half a pack into each and we, we're dealing with like two litres of fermentable liquid. So it should have been much less yeast, which would have then had a much slower fermentation and probably would have naturally finished fermenting in the bottle and carbonated more naturally. We tried to do the bottle conditioning with a bit of sugar and didn't give it enough time to, to fizz up properly. But this one might fizz up, we'll, we'll leave yeah, it. Yeah, maybe we'll leave that one and see if it, if it does okay over a couple of weeks instead. There was something else that we did wrong. So the temperature in this room is not ideal. It's, it's not bad but we don't have a climate controlled environment and so at night the temperature dips and then during the day it heats up this room is more kind of north facing so it's the coolest of our upstairs rooms um, but it's still not ideal and obviously there's lots of light that comes in here so that we knew and you can only work within the conditions that you have 
The other thing that I would say, and I find this actually with lots of recipes that bloggers put out, is there's so much assumed information. So with regard to the bucket, it said a small bucket. Now, small in the context of what? If you're talking about a massive wine vat, then the bucket that we used was small. But did they mean small as in only just a little bit bigger than the volume of liquid? Because that's probably what they should have said rather than small, because it is small in comparison to a 25 litre bucket that we have. Um, and then the same with the sprinkle of yeast. I mean, that's not good enough, same like it was one watermelon, not a certain number of grams or whatever, or kilos. Um, so there was a lot of assumed information in that recipe that we didn't know, but the writer knew. And that's why you have to test these recipes and then you can kind of fine tune them yourself. So now we know we need a vessel that's just slightly larger than the volume of liquid that we're going to put in. We know that a sprinkle of yeast means really probably a pinch. Um, we now know that the timings need to be a little bit more or less depending on the conditions. Um, so yeah, there's quite a few things there and we wouldn't do the, the, the same straining that we did and put it back in the massive vessel and leave it for another day. Yeah, I would actually blend the fruit and then strain it straight into the yeah. fermenter. So yeah. you're fermenting melon juice rather than melon smoothie. Yeah, so there's a few things and that's, I mean, we do, we do lots of things because we want to test a recipe to learn, okay, what is it the author hasn't said? And then we can go on to perfect it or change it to, to how we like things. So we definitely do it again. Um, but better. Just change all the things. But that do we... it completely differently. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's not like this isn't drinkable. This is definitely drinkable. I think it's very drinkable for like a week or so. Mm. And these, although these didn't work because of the oxidization, the great thing with all of these wines is they, they all will go to vinegar if you just leave them a bit longer. Um, so they will get used as salad dressings and whatnot. Um, and now we know that actually melon vi vinegar is quite nice. So that's something that we've learned as well. So our uh, melon vinegar has a pH of 3.2. And then this one, 3.7. So quite a big difference in acidity. So this is what they would do on one of my favorite TV shows, Mythbusters, <laughs> is they would replicate the results of the desired thing that they were trying to do. So we're gonna force carbonate our melon wine with a soda stream and hopefully get something fizzy. Well, that's melon fizz. Alright. Interesting, still doesn't look very fizzy. Yeah, that's not fizzy enough. Hmm. Hmm. You can feel some bubbles across your tongue, but not like a sparkling wine, for example. Well, let's do it again. No. <laughs> okay. That's more like it. Better. That created a mess. Well, that's why we have a white clean surface. Hmm. Yeah, it's a little bit fizzy, but still a really light fizz. I mean, you can see more bubbles. Yeah. Well, that was anticlimactic. Yeah. Right, well, there we go. We've somewhat successfully created a <laughs> fizzy, alcoholic, melon-based drink with a melon that we grew in the garden, which is always very satisfying. Uh, Would I have it again? It doesn't taste bad. I think mm. if we put this aside, it will mellow out a little bit and um, be a nice, a nice refreshing summer drink, probably with a bit of tonic in it, to be honest. But I think that's enough homebrew shenanigans <laughs> for one day. We'll leave it there and see you in the next one. Cheers. Bye.